Good evening and welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle with your host Kilu Nyasha and Stephen Leader is engineering tonight and with me is Gloria LaRiva and she is National Coordinator of the National Committee to Free the Cuban Five and has worked for decades to end U.S. hostility toward Cuba. She's traveled frequently to the island over the past two decades, as well as to Venezuela, Bolivia, and Mexico, where she's been invited to speak at many international events. Gloria has been a key organizer of mass demonstrations with the Answer Coalition opposing wars from 1991 to the present. In 1998, she produced the award-winning video, Genocide by Sanctions. Gloria is president of the typographical sector of the Media Workers Union, local 39521CWA. She has also been a candidate for the Peace and Freedom Party and the Party for Socialism and Liberation, running for California governor and U.S. president, respectively. In September 2005, days after Hurricane Katrina, La Riva Gloria <laughs> traveled to New Orleans producing the video Heroes Not Looters. Welcome to Freedom Gloria. It's, it's such a pleasure to have you. It's good to see you Keelan. Likewise. Always. Yes. Usually we're at protests. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, and um, we've known each other and been bumping heads at demonstrations for decades now. <laughs> well, since we moved here in 1981. Right. 28 years. Yes, it's a long time. And I uh, actually was released from the hospital December 1980. So it was 20, wow. almost 29 years um, to the month that uh, that I've been um, out of a um, nursing institution and liberated. And right now the governor is threatening to put a lot of us back into institutions, as you mm. may know. Uh, threatening to cut off in-home support services so that uh, persons like myself would be institutionalized. But that's another topic for another day. And Gloria, I want to talk to you about the Cuban Five. Um, there was a decision made just recently mm -hmm. that that sentenced, uh, that reversed the court's decision and sent it, sentenced, uh, or resentenced, I guess I should say, uh, one of the defendants to 21 years. Um, will you talk about the case? Uh, enlighten our, our viewers as to who they are and what's going on. Yes, well, it's a complex case, but I'll say something briefly about them. The Cuban Five are five Cubans who came into Miami in, starting in 1990 to infiltrate terrorist organizations. These terrorist groups, financed by the CIA, armed, given the green light, have waged terror for the 50 years of the Cuban Revolution. So the Cuban Five are men who were in their 30s in 1990 to infiltrate the groups and report back to Cuba if there was going to be an attack. Uh, in their mission, they saved two civilian airliners from being bombed. They thwarted many attacks. And yet, because the U.S. government finances those terrorist attacks with the aim of trying to destroy the Cuban Revolution, uh, in 1998, September 12th, the FBI arrested the Cuban Five and charged them with espionage conspiracy, which they were doing nothing of the sort. They were not engaging in espionage in the U.S. on the United States, which is what espionage is. They were monitoring terrorist organizations. And so they were sentenced, uh, they were convicted of all counts because they were tried in Miami, the one city they should never have been tried in. Yes, because there are a lot of uh, reactionary yeah. Cubans there. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole city is really, the all the institutions of power are controlled by the right wing. Right. So they were sentenced from 15 years to double life. After numerous appeals processes, the first one which won them an overturning of all their convictions but was later reversed in the full court in Atlanta. Well, last year the court did rule that three of them were excessively sentenced. So two days ago, three days ago, we were in court in Miami and saw Antonio Guerrero. His sentence went down from life, no parole, to 21 years and 10 months. It's, okay. it's a relief in that we know he'll get out in seven years, but every day is an injustice. And what about the other uh, four? Well, 
The other two who are in Miami right now awaiting sentencing, which may happen in November, are Fernando Gonzalez, who has 19 years, and his sentence has been struck down. We don't know what he'll get. The other one, Ramon Labanino, has life, no parole. And we're hoping for a substantial reduction, although the government is claiming that he was a leader, and therefore they may try to give him more years than Antonio. Now, the key individual that we're very concerned about is Gerardo Hernandez because he has double life. Mm -hmm. And life in, in federal since the 90s, there's no parole at all. You come out mm -hmm. dead unless you have some other um, relief. And he is in Victorville prison. His uh, convictions are truly outrageous because it was a political uh, prosecution for the shoot down by Cuba in 1996 of the planes that were invading constantly Cuban airspace. And the right wing, the US government, has tried to link the five to that case, to the shoot down. Now, first of all, I it, remember was a, that. it was a legitimate act of state, uh, but the US has declared it murder. Cuba is not allowed to defend itself according to US law. But the only um, connection was... But any other um, independent, sovereign nation has the right to shoot down a plane that is violating its airspace, is that... Well, especially if you've invaded at least 15 times in a matter of months, and the ones who were infiltrated into that group knew that they were producing bombs, that they were at, one, at some point going to throw out of the planes. Oh. But these, the, uh, the head of the Brothers to the Rescue group is a noted terrorist. And that's Miami. That's yeah. U.S. policy. So there is a worldwide movement for the five. We were the first organization that formed eight years ago, right after the conviction, mm -hmm. based here in San Francisco, but operates nationally. And we've, we've done quite a lot, getting a full page out in the New York Times, protests, hundreds of forums. And in fact, in the hearing the other day in Miami, where both the prosecution and the defense attorney, Leonard Weinglass, negotiated a 20-year recommended sentence, but the judge turned it down and gave him two, almost two years more. But the prosecution was asked, why are you for this reduction now? And she said, mainly because of the contentiousness and debate swirling around this case worldwide. And she said, imagine how it will calm the waters in the world for the defense and prosecution to agree that this sentence will be reasonable. In other words, the U.S. government is acknowledging in this backhanded way that they're worried about public opinion on the case of the Cuban Five, 